What's up, metal and heavy music fans? Welcome back to the monthly Underground Metalcast segment where we just chill out together and check out your latest recommendations for underground metal albums on Bandcamp. All right, kicking things off, we have Man Eating Orchid with Hive Mind out of India. I've said a few other times on this segment. Always glad to get metal out of India. There's some cool stuff going on over there. Kind of neat. A little bit of like old school death metal, but a little bit on the progier side too. A little bit of like death in there. Kind of a mix of the like early stuff with when they moved into more overtly prog sound. Hell yeah. This little chuggy part here. Yeah, super old school vibe. Like, if somebody told me this was, like, from the 90s, right down to the production choices, I would I would believe you. They describe themselves as heavy prog slash mathcore from Bangalore, India. A little thrashy, too. I like it. I'm, I'm digging this really kind of retro energy, but... Sometimes that can come off as just sort of generic too, but this doesn't. It's got its own little special sauce to it. Interesting kind of choices of melody too. Lots of cool little changes here. I hear their dedication to the mathy side of things. It's kind of like a hypnotic, that little like cyclical riff there. Bass sounds awesome. I mean, as far as feedback goes, this is great. Like, I don't, I don't really have anything to say. I think you're fucking nailing it. Obviously, I'd have to sit and listen to the whole thing all the way through to really get a sense of the pacing and everything. But songwriting seems on point production is definitely on point performances are awesome i'm down i'm totally done great great start great way to kick off the episode Ooh, i like that little intro though yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> always a good time yeah i'm i'm sold so that is man-eating orchid with hive mind next up we have hierarchy of one with 10th decile out of Bath, UK. Not familiar with that location. Kind of thrashy groove metal. So this is like a solo act, it seems. Also, this hair hanging from the mic. Let's <laughs> try to get rid of that. Like these big building heavy metal riffs with those like twinkling pianos on the intro. I believe this one's instrumental. Which is an interesting choice for this style of music. Because I like instrumental, but I feel like this style benefits in particular from having some vocals on it too. Especially these more like chuggy riffy sections. Just find a lot of instrumental music tends to benefit from having more kind of noodly riffs to kind of carry what the vocals would be doing with the melody like this <laughs> it's more that like Cetriani and um, uh, why am I blanking on, on the Steve Vai like that kind of energy great riffing loving it but I feel like I can already hear the like falsetto like Maybe Journey style vocals over it or something like that would be beneficial. But the production's good. I love the sound of this bass too. Like this big rumbling groove you got going. So yeah, I think it's cool as far as like what you put together here. Really solid. I just think that in particular what you've written feels like something that, that would benefit from having some vocals on it. But. If y'all feel differently, let me know down in the comments. Again, that is Hierarchy of One with 10th Decile. All right, next up, we've got a split between Vemut and Skognat. Skognat we've talked about before. It's 
So let's dive into part of the Vemot side. November. Vemot's out of Germany. I forget, is Skognet also? Yeah, Skognet also out of Germany. Black metal. Very depressive black metal. This is a one man, I believe they're both one man black metal projects. If I'm not mistaken. Big build here. I like that atmosphere. This big explosion of the blast beats. Fitting cover, too. Matches the depressive energy of it. Yeah, I'm digging this. Especially, again, as somebody who doesn't listen to a ton of, like, super depressive black metal. A big moody kind of doomy track here. I wonder if it picks up later on. Ooh, I like the... Added these kind of, like... More funerally almost leads over the main riff. And then we got Todes Wunsch. Something about death. Not familiar with that particular word. Traum, I believe, is dream, if I'm remembering. Kronk is like sick. Some of the some of that German. <laughs> it's nice when I get to use it. I should have done Spanish. Really kick myself for that, because it's just so much more applicable, but I just love the German language, so. Okay, cool. So that's the Vemot side. Let's also check out the Skognet side with the Swarm. Similar energy, slightly different style and production. But I feel like the vocals are a little further up and a little bit more of like a... No, compressed sounds. But I dig Skognats. I believe previously we've covered Rain Eternal and probably some of their other stuff too. Or his other stuff. Like these little melodies, it kind of reminds me of like Insomnium in a way. Into the more, again, kind of funeral, doomy sounding part. Yeah, I like the energy. Great atmosphere once more. It's good when you have a split with somebody who complements your style, but is not exactly the same as you, either. Or sometimes you can do kind of like a yin and yang sort of thing. Ooh, a little shift here. Yeah, good dynamics. Building back up to the main riff. Feel like a little bit more of like an explosion would have been nice there, but that's not necessarily the style of music. It's not. Ooh, we got some acoustic. Not meant to be flashy or particularly wild. Another moody part here with the acoustic. Good stuff though. Yeah. So that is Vemut and Skognet with their split that I'm just gonna call November. The Swarm. Next we have Driven to Revolt with All-American Khan. Getting right down to business. <laughs> These guys are out of Jacksonville, Florida. We're going to go for kind of like a groove metal. A little bit of that like old school thrash metal energy but slowed down again. There's, I feel like there's something missing a little bit here because it's like I will say this like the vocal style isn't my particular favorite because it's got that more sort of like Yarly mix of like Pantera which I do like but then also a little bit of that um dare I say butt rock energy and that's not necessarily an insult for me like I like some of those bands but that's actually fine though because the vocals sound pretty good which is not always the case <laughs> you know, like I've heard me some really bad vocals in this style I feel like the guitar is actually what's oh I like this part this this little kind of like proggy groovy section I like that 
there's something about how the elements are coming together that's that I feel like is a little bit off. And it, ooh. This very tool influence here that in fact there's a riff later on in um Is it Schism where at the end it's like So maybe it's not even I don't know, something about how the elements are coming together just feels off. And the vocals could probably be tightened up a little bit. Yeah, I just can't put my finger on it. There's there's something overly simplistic about the combination. Maybe y'all can help me out in the comments. Like, I, I just feel like there's, like, an X factor here that's keeping me from enjoying this as much as I could. But I think you've got a lot of elements here that are working. Maybe varying up the pacing a little bit. That could be part of it, because there's a lot of just 4-4, four, four, dun, 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 like, same kind of pace. It might be that. But yeah, that is Driven to Revolt, All-American Con. I think you've got a good foundation here. Just got to figure out how do we how do we step it up to that next level. All right, then we have Effigia Funebre with Evocatio, which I butchered the pronunciation, I'm sure. Same, uh, band out of Chihuahua, Mexico. I don't think we've had somebody out there yet. Like the band photo. Going for black metal, I'm assuming, here, based on this intro. Ooh, very second wave, too. Very, um, early in Slate. This is the vibe I'm getting already. That's, uh, Vikling Liger Veldi, or Frost. Where it's, like, melodic, but also a little bit raw. More than a little bit raw. Great vocals, and it's very like, eh, like kind of cut off, just constricted quality. Very raspy. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Good vibes. You all know I'm a sucker for all things enslaved, too. If you're a regular viewer of this segment, which if you aren't, you should consider becoming one. I do this segment every month. And I have a whole playlist that I will uh, put up a uh, end screen for at the end. But also, aside from that, every week I put out tier lists, reviews, all sorts of other content. So feel free to subscribe if you're not already. Yeah, as far as this goes, it's always tough because, like, I don't have that much to say. Because <laughs> it's just like, I've heard a lot of this. We'll just put it that way. I think it's done very well. And if I were to give it a grade, like, for a review, just based on what I'm hearing, obviously it's hard to give a score without sitting down and listening to it front to back. But based on what I'm hearing here, like, I, I could see this ranging anywhere from a B to a B plus. It's just that I have the same words to say about it as they do of most solid black metal bands in this style. But, yeah, I, I, I would dig this. I would sit down and listen to it front to back for sure. So again, that is Effigy Funebra with Evocatio. All right, we've got Ignea and Ersedu with Bicia for our second split of the day. Folkier energy on here. I believe I've covered Ignea in some form previously. Not familiar with Ersedu. Lovely vocals. These are great. And and I always my ear gets caught by stuff like this. This is the Ignea side, by the way. Because there's a lot of vocalists in this style that I really just can't stand. <laughs> like it's just like too much. It gets a little bit too um shrill, I guess is the word for me, which is just my personal taste. But not here. Really strong. Like this little chanting part too. That reminds me of um, 
Once again, typical to this segment, I'm blanking on the name of the band. They they recently did a um, or or gave use of a track on an upcoming video game, of which I loved the first one, and now they're putting out the sequel, Hellblade. Fantastic game, highly recommended. It's been out for a couple of years now, I want to say. Big intro here. Pardon my itching. <laughs> this sweater gets a little itchy after a while. If you're curious where it's from, too, it's a Terrier Cults, I believe. Um, I have a bunch of their stuff. Great Boston Terrier, Terrier, Terrier focus band, but they have a lot of like metal themes stuff in addition to other things. I like that little, that little like synth line that's going on there. Let's also check out the Ersedu side. Doomy and Chuggy here for the first one. Ooh, more, go, much more death metal for these. Interesting. I'm also curious about these tracks that are not marked as either band. Is that a, a full collab at that point? This has some, like, moon spell. Vocals on this one also remind me a little bit of, like, uh, Alyssa from Arch Enemy. Great atmosphere. Very full. It seems like they're they're the more dramatic sounding band, more symphonic. And by the way, um, Ignia out of Ukraine. Hopefully they're staying safe out there. By the time this episode airs, I don't even know what the situation is going to look like. I am recording this still in early. April, but this episode will not air until May, unless things change. <laughs> Love that though. Burn, burner. That's very septic flesh there. That good stuff. So that is Ignia and Ersedu with Abyssia. Next up, we have Out of the Mouth of Graves with Harbinger Unceremonious, South Carolina band. We're going full doom here. Experimental death metal, that's what it says. Featuring members of Psionic Madness. Kind of portally in this intro. I like the hands. Spooky. <laughs> They're very death doomy. What do we say? Like swallow the sun kind of influence? We got tags. Lovecraftian death metal. Not surprised to see that. Dissonant death metal. Ooh, death, spe death metal's answer to Death Smell Omega. I could hear that. Especially these guitars here. They could they could fit on a bill with like Alterage. Malthusian. People who are familiar with them. Irish bands featuring members of Alters of Plagues. Might just be the drummer of Alter of Plagues. I like it. I'm, I'm a big fan of this style of death metal, honestly. It's more like cavernous, hellish, very blackened. Good vocal variety. We got some gutturals. We got some raspy, higher snarls here. Drumming sounds effectively technical at some level. Ooh. This part's a little bit, um, Possession Prayer. That was a great song. Yeah, raunchy. Digging this. I think this and that first band are my favorites so far. But we've already got some strong entries in here. Feedback-wise... I don't know, just keep doing you. <laughs> I'm definitely going to want to check this one out in full as well. It's only four bucks too, and you get seven tracks. 
seems very reasonable. Came out March 31st. Honestly, quality-wise, just like checking it here, I could see how this could have probably made my March list if it hadn't come out late in the month. But yeah, I'll have to listen to this all the way through. That is Out of the Mouth of Graves with Harbinger Unceremonious. Next up, we have the return of Bog Wizard and Frog Lord together for our third split of the day. Pretty rare that we have so many splits in one episode, I feel like. These guys are always fun. Start quiet here. Unsurprisingly, Stoner, Doom, Sludge. That's the vibe here. Lots of reptile worship. <laughs> Very traditional style doom. Which I'm not a huge fan of. Like, I like the classics. But there's an audience for everything. And I try to, as always, step outside of my comfort zone, just like I ask you to do the same. Well, bear with me. The combination of the mask and the sweater can be a little rough. <laughs> I always like these chanted lines they come up with, with the bow down to the power of the frog lord. Just like literally worshipping frogs. Just like uh, <laughs> Sludge worships the almighty slug. But yeah, you get the idea. Big doomy riffs. Let's do some frog lord. That was Bog Wizard. Oh my god! <laughs> Some yucky clips in here. Frog Lord. A little faster, but not too much. Very hypnotic. Good, good, uh, smoking music. <laughs> Like the trance-like vocals. Like the guitar tone. I mean, what can I say? Oh, they've got a collab at the end, too. I should definitely get to that one. Yeah, solid hooks. This is Bog Wizard's picture. <laughs> love the Love the vibe. Love bands that don't take themselves too seriously, but still take their music seriously. So the bog and the frog combine. Yeah, pretty fun stuff. So yeah, if you're more into this, definitely something you should check out. Always fun. They've got a couple of releases too. So that is Bog Wizard and Frog Lord with Bog Wizard versus Frog Lord, a frog in the bog. All right, then we have Rome with Barbaric Values. This has been sitting in my box for a while but just had not come out yet. It actually came out the day that I'm recording this, which is probably quite a ways from when you're actually watching this. <laughs> in New Roma. We are, in, we are here in New Roma to say fuck you to messengers of dread and obedience, is the description. Born in 1995, dead in 2002, and evoked in 2009. Studio only projects. I'm trying to put my finger on what I want to call this. Not a lot of uh, tags here. Concept album based on the moral and ethical conflict between socially imposed conditions and primordial nature of nature. How very. What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Ambitious of me. Big topics. A little groove metal-y, I guess? This cover is very interesting. It definitely caught my eye. It's that kind of like... Uncanny combination of... Like, robotic elements with human organic features. Yeah, big groove. like that bass. Definitely hearing that, like, conceptual element coming through. 
Very story-like. Seems like we got a bunch of dynamics going on here too. Hey y'all in the comments, what would you, what genre would you label this? I guess Prague. There's some Prague in there for sure. A slower, steadier, sludgy kind of Prague. Oh, here we go. Speak of the devil, we pick things up. Cool opening riff. Into this big groove. That's a nice little hook there. Bass sounds awesome. Like this. The dropping out of the guitar with the bass just carrying the riff again, that it was definitely reminding me of another. You know what? That little helmety there. It's probably what I'm thinking of. Oh, yeah, it's me thinking of. Dun, 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 dun. Is that milk toast that I'm thinking of? I always love those uh, reference points to helmets. Big fan. We got like. More electronic kind of ambient section there. Cool stuff. This sounds interesting. Hard one to kind of nail down in a segment like this where I'm just giving you a little taste, but hopefully that intrigues you enough to check it out on your own. That is Rome with barbaric values. Then we have Busium or Butium with Zimbrul Ab White Wissent. They are out of Romania. Call themselves ambient folk rock. Two violins in addition to the guitar, bass, and drums. Another one with very pretty vocals. Oh, that little, that little kind of uulated section made me think of cranberries. Rest in peace. One of the most original and will be sorely missed vocalists in the pop and alternative scene from the 90s in particular. Great energy here. Great production. A little guitar solo here too. Love the color of the cover. Very pleasant and eye-catching. Here's the violin. I'm really digging this. Some of y'all are going to hate me for saying this, but I actually am a big early Dave Matthews fan. It wasn't when they were popular, but later on I turned on to them and that, that style of playing always takes me back to fond memories of hearing that stuff growing up. This obviously has more of a overtly folk twist on it. But I feel like the comparison is fair. Some realms. Y'all, uh, y'all fellow Metalhead Dave Matthews fans, sound off in the comments. I always love finding those people who, who have the balls to speak up that, that you love something that is considered by most Metalheads to be totally corny and lame. But we, we must unite <laughs> in our, our corniness. They were amazing songwriters. And this band seems like they've got a lot of really strong, strong qualities in their songwriting, too. Big grand. This would be great for audience participation. What else we got here? Fun little bounce to this one. It's like a good drinking song. <laughs> Ooh, more of that. Also, for you naysayers out there on the Dave Matthews comparison, go listen to the song Halloween. Like, Dave goes fucking hard on that song. <laughs> Why is this lonely love? This little bass section here, too. Very pretty. So this is this is an album that seems like it'll take you on a journey. So yeah, I, I think this is uh, I've got a top three so far in terms of my favorites today. Beautiful, yeah. Another one I wanna I wanna listen to all the way through. This just came out when 
February 20th, so it's been out for a bit now. Yeah, I'll have to take a, a deeper look at this. Really, really enjoying it. Thank you for sharing that with me, Lucium. So yeah, that is again Zimbrul Alb, or White Wysent. All right, then we have Mark Aruda with Mark Aruda and the Bloodline, The Lockdown. Okay, back to <laughs> after that nice little kind of peaceful aside. Melodeath Metalcore Band from Hamilton, Ontario. Akira from 2006. Almost a little industrialized sounding in that kind of like Fear Factory way on that riff. Okay, more straight groove here. Kind of a Lamb of God sounding riff, this one. I like the raspier vocals. We got the guitar solo right in the first track. Cool cover. Simple but effective. Eye catching. Intriguing. Makes me wonder what the concept is there. Reminds me of that like medical symbol. This one's got a little death in it, especially in the kind of raspier, old-school sounding vocals. It's interesting that they included metalcore in their definition, because I'm mostly hearing the death metal side here. Definitely, if they're influenced by metalcore, I would guess probably earlier, like 90s, late 90s era. Where it's more like hardcore influence. Name your price too. I always point that out. Smart move for smaller bands. Good for people to check them out. You know, maybe I checked out uh, Aquila before. The logo looks familiar. It looks like this houses a bunch of Mark Aruda's related projects. Very, sounds solid. I'm not overly like blown away. I'm trying to figure out what my feedback would be that would make me more, even more impressed. Cause it's good. It's very good actually. Great guitar work, again. No, it's just another one where I'm trying to put my finger on like, what's that missing X factor? That's causing this not to, like, leap out at me like some of the other top-notch releases here did. It may just be a matter of I need to listen to it all the way through, too. Because, again, we're just sampling here. Overall, solid stuff. There's not, like, a specific thing that's jumping out at me, either, of, like, hey, change this or do this differently. Maybe the guitar tone a little bit? This riff is a little bit kind of like on the more generic side, too, I would say. Okay, here we go. Not that this is any profound deviation either, but more more energy to it. Yeah, good stuff. Y'all let me know. What, what do you think? Is there something missing here, or you think it's good how it is? That is Mark Aruda and the Bloodline with the Lockdown. <clears throat> All right, these next two were recommended by... PTB Empire, who is a fan, common commenter on the channel, and has their own project that should be dropping music soon, if I recall. So this first one's Seven, with Dark Scientific. So this is out of Nevada. A little proggy here with the guitar work. A little bit low-key, too. Interesting tone, too. It's like kind of like taking that compressed sound and utilizing it in a very purposeful way. Yeah, that guitar tone is very kind of unique. Definitely on the gentier side, giving me some kind of um, Tesseract-ish vibes, at least loosely. Lovely singing. And I'm not always a fan of that more kind of like pop style vocal almost. But if you do it just right, you got the voice for it. They're pretty. The vocals remind me, and it might be on this, the other project too, 
I had this comparison. In places it reminded me of like It Dies Today. Just the vocals, not the the songs necessarily. Yeah, a, little, a lot of that um like tesseract little textures in there. Man, I miss textures. Wish they could have finished their little trilogy they were working on. Like these kind of like twinkly, kind of starlight sounding, if that makes sense. <laughs> Ooh, cool tapping section here. They're like animals as leaders. Come to think of it, a lot of this music has kind of animals as leaders vibes, just with the vocals on top of it. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. Very pretty, very atmospheric. I like that there's some vaguely, like, industrial elements here, too, especially in this song. Definitely ties in the programming stuff. Nice, so that is Seven with Dark Scientific. And then their second recommendation was Votum with Katonic. If I'm saying that right. So these guys out of Poland. Another kind of simple but provocative cover. Oh yeah, and this one, um, I sampled a little bit of this. Ryan be a bit of Isan. Combines dark and vibrant atmosphere, bringing both force and ambience to play. Yeah, very like Arctis era Isan, I feel like. Very dramatic, even melodramatic. Ooh, that was great. Great big dramatic note transitioning into this big riff here. Love the uh, synth lines here, the kind of like simulated strings. Piano. Lovely. I'm I'm lost at a loss for words. Good picks. Good picks, B PTB Empire. Right up my alley, I would say. I think I'm more impressed with this one than the other one, but they're both intriguing enough that I would want to give them a full listen if I have the time. Because <laughs> there's I think y'all would be amazed. So, like, some of you probably think you know how much music I listen to on a daily basis, but I think even then, if you, like, had a day in the life with me, you'd be like, Jesus. Ooh. Listen to that. A little bit of, like, dream theatery in there, too. More great bass. This has been a day of really good bass. Yeah, really strong. So yeah, that is Votum with Katonic. Check it out. And then we have Defected Decay, which I have a feeling is going to be a complete departure <laughs> from what we were just doing. Back to Germany here. Yeah, back to some raunchy, ugly death metal. Talk about, get, give you some whiplash on this episode. Big groovy chug here. Much more simplistic. Which is totally fine. It's just having those back to back is a little bit tough. Those very classic sounding, like 90s era titles, Baptized in Blood, Kingdom of Sin. Which is the name of the album. Yeah, just very kind of like classic style death metal. I feel like the guitar tone could use a little toying with still in terms of making it a little bit more immersing. We got a little atmosphere on this one. Drum production too could be be tightened up. It sounds a little like tinny. Nice build up here. Ooh. A little skanky beat. That's fun. 
Yeah, I mean, keep it raw because that's your style. I just think, like, maybe toying around with the production and the tones and stuff, the mixing, could take you a little bit further. Give you a little bit more mileage. But appropriately raunchy and ugly. I don't have any major issues with it for sure. We wonder if we're going for like an overall war theme too. Doesn't clarify in the main description. Yeah, it's not clear, but based on the banner here, I would guess so. So yeah, that is Defected Decay with Kingdom of Sin. All right, then we have this Russian project whose name I don't know how to pronounce. Maybe it's down here. Nope, it's not in the tags or anywhere. What do we got here? It just says metal, black metal. Okay, I do like this cover. Very industrial kind of looking, plus the black metal armbands, of course. That color scheme just reminds me of Three Teeth. Very atmospheric. Digging the reverb on the drums. Production sounding pretty good. So one man, black metal pro oh, pronounced as Ubi 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 something like that. Like the synths here. Pretty cool, let me get into the meat. Ooh. Hell yeah, it smells vocals. Gnarly. Reminds me a little bit of like Watane. Boy, production's great. Ooh, a little break there with the bass going. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. Wow, I'm gonna hold this for my black metal list. Dude, this sounds fucking sick. Ooh. Where's this going? Ooh. Damn. That sounds fucking rad, though. I'm not gonna lie, like, this is the most excited I've been about a black metal release, maybe this year. <laughs> I'm getting goosebumps. Love, and, and you did what I talk about, too, uh, on these segments a lot. Like, your band camp totally matches. You went with that red and black color scheme. You got the cool branches with the sky in red. Ooh. A little thunderclap there with a little guitar break. Cool kind of eastern sounding synths there. Yo, I'm sold. I am so sold. This is wicked. Just totally evil sounding. Everything you could ask for in a modern black metal release. Yeah, I'm definitely going to spend some more time with this, y'all. Again, that is Ubi with their self-titled album. Next up, we have Dim Wind and Breaths with Seasons. For a little split here. Change of pace. Dim Wind is out of Gothenburg, Sweden. Big capital of melodic death metal. But I recall Dim Wind is something a little different. Yeah, more post-metal, post-metal adjacent, <laughs> as they put here. A little proggy with the riffs, too. I like that. More good production. Kind of cool little freeform riffing sounding style. Can't remember. I think they're instrumental, but I'm not entirely recalling that. And then uh, uh, Breaths is an American Black Gaze act, so we'll get to that in a minute. Taking this. Very black metal-y uh, blast beat there. This is cool. I don't recall them having vocals like this before. I like the picture here. That's cool. 
pretty piano. Great drumming. Two in a row with really strong, echoing sounding drums. Very cool. Long compositions here. So this is a 15 minute, 38 second song that I am, again, just snipping down to bare little, little nuggets here to get you interested. Let's check out Breaths. When soft voices die. Okay, that's a change in pace. Featuring Chad Capper of Frontier. We love Frontier here. One of my favorite metalcore albums of last year. Ooh, little bass break here. More pounding drums. There's some connective tissue. Very subtle, eerie synths. More good atmosphere. Yeah, I'm really digging these drums. Some clean singing here, too. It's a more post metal y part. I can see why they, they joined forces here. like that eerie ambience in the background. Another almost 15 minute track. Something I'll have to sit down and experience from start to finish. But definitely worthy for just a two song split. I mean, you're getting over 30 minutes of material here. Sounds like really great dynamics, great production, solid performances. Definitely worth checking out. So again, that is Dim Wind and Breaths with Seasons. Then we have Petral with Ver. <laughs> this is out of Croatia. And Zurich, Switzerland as well. We're back into the black metal fray here, atmospheric. The atmospheric black metal, first tag, there you go. Get the album on the cheap too, what's this? Yeah. A dollar or more for the album. Getting some good black metal this week. This month, I should say. Another cool, very classic black metal image. Interesting cover. It reminds me of one of the uh, Cave-In records, I feel like, has a similar color scheme and look. Like those dissonant guitars. Another one with solid production, like not overly glossy, which will ruin a black metal record for the most part. Here it's like everything's coming through really clear, but still got that edge to it. Nice little break there. Lots of good dynamic songwriting going on here. We're back into the heavy shit. <laughs> Great driving beat. Got my head bobbing. That's always a win. A little skankier beat there, too. Good mix of atmosphere and more just driving aggression. Reminds me a little bit of stuff like Merg. Well, y'all sent me some, some good stuff. Fair warning, too, to you viewers. I am getting a number of requests at this point that it's impossible for me to include everyone, which is awesome, but also, like, I feel bad. But I do my best. I cover as much as I can. And I feel like an hour is already pushing it for the length of these episodes. Little piano there. Yeah, that's a... Lots of good stuff happening here. Yeah, another one. Just good. Good stuff all around. Makes me want to listen to the rest of it, and that's what should happen when I'm checking your stuff out. I want to feel like I'm dropped right into your best qualities. So again, that is Petral with Vir. Then we have Isolator with Vanishing Gray out of Kentucky. Speaking of metalcore, since we're going more in that direction. Oh, mastered in uh, Portland, Oregon. My own backyard, as it were. 
Alternative deathcore, metalcore rock. Very early 2000s metalcore sound. Kind of a... Uh, those, those Gothenburg influences, obviously, so reminds me the most of, like, Darkest Hour. Darkest Hour, Kill Switch. Ooh. That little As I Lay Dying, too, maybe. All That Remains. This is such a 2000s-era metalcore album cover, too, with just the trees. Such a trope, but... Gives me that nostalgia, for sure. Big intro here. Ooh! Here's the deathcore moment. Hell yeah. <laughs> Reminds me of the... The part on that, um... Lorna Shore EP. Good riffs. All stuff very familiar to me. Like, if you're... You've been listening to Metalcore since the 2000s. It's gonna be very familiar, but I feel like this done quite well. Kick drum intro. Ooh. That's fun. Going for the more head bobbing parkway drive atmosphere on this one. <laughs> Those sparkly, shimmery guitar leads. A little bit more of that sadness sound to it. Yeah, I like this a lot. Good stuff. That's a very As I Lay Dying riff right there. But I love that style. I, I have a soft spot for that style of guitar riff. Of course, you've got the the quiet portion with the, like, half-screamed, half-spoken lyrics. All, all of it on display. <laughs> I'm feeling this one deep, deep, y'all. This was my high school experience, basically. Good chuggy parts with the backing leads. Getting, doing a good job of mixing atmosphere with hooks, which can be a tough thing to do. Like, you often, you'll get one or the other. Kind of August Burns Red here, too. Yeah, it's, it's clear these guys are pulling from some of my all-time favorite bands from back in the day. Some of them still killing it now, too. Yeah, I'm down with this, too. If you want Metalcore fans, definitely check out Isolator. Another one I'm, I'm really wanting to listen to all the way through, if I get the goddamn time. <laughs> Isolator, Vanishing Gray. All right, another change of pace. We've got Nonsun with Blood and Spirit. I feel like it's, it's appropriate as a channel dedicated towards peace that we have Russian bands and Ukrainian bands <laughs> in the same video here. Is that of Lviv? Hope y'all are doing okay. Non-Sun crew, staying safe out there. Not sure exactly where you're located relative to all the crazy stuff going on. Hypnotic take on tonal weights. That's how they're putting it. Definitely do me. Ooh. Experimental, ambient, atmospheric sludge and doom all in the tags. Like that big low-end riff. Like the, uh backing ambience another appropriate band pick here I've been intrigued by this cover too I can't entirely tell what it is it looks like it's like a hood or something With a little chain over it Again, y'all, it, it continues to amaze me, like, most mainstream Doom just does zero for me, but a lot of the underground stuff that I wind up checking out on here is really special. So you know me, I like fast, I like aggressive, but sometimes it's nice to have something that just, like, surrounds you and swallows you up. Yeah, I'll be interested. The test, though, is like when I skip through these things, I'm loving every part, but then I try to sit through a 
12 minute song of this and it gets a little bit more difficult for me but again that's just me <laughs> being not the biggest doom fan but y'all doomers in the audience best hop on this, this sounds very very worthwhile very layered textured go toe to toe with stuff alongside like rise to the sky and another one I think we're going to be covering here. That was a cool little, almost like a fake-out ending there. Awesome. So yeah, that is Non-Sun with Blood and Spirit. Then we have Althotus with Wooden Torments. Very interesting cover here. Much more detailed than some of the other stuff we've had. Big synth intro. Where are these guys out of? Quebec. Simple band logo, got the upside down crosses. Man of my own heart, <laughs> since we have the upside down cross in our logo too. I wonder how many people even notice it in ours though. I feel like ours is a little bit more covert. They're going a little doomy here too. We got in the tags. Black metal, death metal, crash metal, horror. A little doom in the tags. Cool leads. Oh, I just realized there's like a Grim Reaper over here too. It's kind of hiding. Very cool. Here's the death. That kind of like 90s sounding death metal. I like it. I dig. I can get down with this. Solid vocals. I like that the death growl too is a little bit different than kind of your average death metal band. Not quite like the deep low, not quite the raspy high either. It's like somewhere in between. Drums, again. Pounded away, sounding really good. Let's check out Empty Coffin. Got some melodic riffs here too. This reminds me of like a rotting Christ riff. The spoken word too <laughs> makes me think of rotting Christ. I can see where that black metal influence is there too. Say mostly death metal, but definitely that blackened edge to it. Fun riffs. Ooh. That one hit my eardrums hard. <laughs> A little bit of those like melodic death metal influences in there too. This riff here too. Ooh. A little heavy metal in there, too. Almost like a Judas Priest kind of riff. Done it again, y'all. That is Althotus with Wooden Torment. Then we have Fordren with Of Mortal Decay. Black and Doom from Canada. Canada to Canada here. Another fun cover. Lots of good album art today. It's gonna be hard to pick which one I'm gonna put in the thumbnail. This this one might be a contender. I do like this happy fellow's face here. Plus, uh, I mean, it's me. <laughs> they put me on the album cover. Can't go wrong with that. A little bit more traditional kind of black and doom. Got a little bit more of that like burzumy kind of flavor to it. A little bit more droning. Yeah, they got the depressive black metal label, too. Good atmosphere, despite maintaining that kind of rougher production. Utilized effectively, I would say. Kind of a neat logo, too. Reminds me more of, like, Vindir or something like that. A little folky looking. Yeah, those raspy vocals with... That's, like, straight up Burzum guitar tone, too. Is there y'all gotta tell me in the comments, is there like a guide out there for like matching some of these bands' guitar tones? I'll bet somebody's made something like that. If you wanna sound like Mayhem, set it like this. If you wanna sound like Burzum, set it like this. Be interested to look at that. These clean vocals are different. I don't know if I love that. Yeah, though I'd say like that would be my feedback is those might need a little bit of look. I like the melodies. Oh 
overall pretty strong work. Definitely kind of comes together, gives the vibe it's going for, for sure. But yeah, that is Forodren, that's hard to say, of Mortal Decay. And then we have Igor Lapo returning with Naturalism from St. Petersburg, Russia. Group here. Hope y'all are staying safe too. We previously covered their a couple of their releases, I think, but I think makes make the sun shine more might have been the last one. It might have been something else. These, these look might have done transvoicer. Yeah, more progressive metal. Yeah, progressive metal, progressive rock. Big sound. Like, talk again about production. These guys just killing it. This is a band that, like, continues to blow me away. I think it's just a one-man project, too, which makes it even more... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me not speak too soon. Yeah, it's, it's largely Igor Lapo, but then he's got some guests on here doing solos and whatnot. But yeah, I continue to be pretty in awe of some of the stuff that this guy's doing. But very triumphant guitar melodies, big lush synth elements. Singing strong? It's interesting too, because this singing style isn't generally my style, but I like how he does it. It reminds me of something, but I can't quite put my finger on it. Love that. Very, like, positive sounding too, which sometimes it's nice to have. Ooh. Listen to that build. I like that. Awesome stuff. You also get kind of a variety of textures and styles too. Yeah, I listen to so much, like, angry and negative stuff. It's nice to have something that's a little bit more positive, meditative, introspective. Lots of wailing guitar leads on here. Big synth there too. Just kind of makes me want to do a little. There's a little wood block in there too. <laughs> Great stuff. So yeah, once again, Igor Lapo seems to be killing it with naturalism. All right, y'all, that is plenty for this month. As always, thank you for watching. Check out the playlist for plenty more episodes of this. Let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite and why this month, and I will see you in the trenches.